Our first pollutant today refers to called biological warfare, where some corals emit toxins to keep other corals away, polluting the tank. Biologists refer to this as the lelopathy, or the use of chemical compounds to suppress the growth of competitors. It's not limited to corals fighting each other. Algae can produce toxins that harm corals. Cyanobacteria can as well as single-celled microorganisms like dinoflagellates and diatoms. The reason allelopathy is in today's pollution video is the nature of these toxins is they're rapidly diluted into oblivion in the ocean. In the aquarium, they're just not. They build up and cause a whole host of issues that are often misidentified. Now, luckily, they're easy solutions. The use of activated carbon has been used extensively in a wide range of applications to absorb, ionically bind, or neutralize the polluted organic molecules like the toxins that these organisms use to fight each other. A proper running skimmer may help remove them, and ozone in that skimmer will oxidize them and help break them down. To give you an idea why this matters to reefers, I found a few articles, starting with one titled Chemical-Rich Seaweed Poison Corals When Not Controlled by Herbivores. It states that 40 to 70 percent of common seaweeds cause bleaching and death of a coral tissue when in direct contact. For seaweeds that harm coral tissues, their lipid-soluble extracts also produce rapid bleaching. Coral bleaching and mortality was limited to the areas in direct contact with these seaweeds or their extracts. So what they're saying is that a majority of algae can poison the coral with direct contact, and probably why we often see that in the aquarium when algae grows near the corals, but also when they come in contact with the extracts from that algae, potentially explaining why people see major setbacks with their coral when they scrub all the algae off the rock and much of it gets lost in the tank, touches the coral, or decays and releases compounds into the tank. In this one called Allelopathic Effects on Macroalgae on Pacillopora Coral Larvae, they stated, we examined the effects of crude extracts of four macroalgal species on Pacillopora larvae under different exposure conditions. Larval mortality increased considerably with increasing concentrations of bryopsis. Many people have prolonged battles with bryopsis and harming the corals now better understand the challenges that they face. Maybe also clear why corals can be stunted with the use of products like Reef HD, Reflux, or Fluconazole treatments to cause fairly rapid die-off of bryopsis, but also ask you to remove the carbon and turn off the skimmer for it to be effective. At least a logical contributing factor as to why most reefers use these solutions fairly safely. But others run into issues and the nuance of our actions come in. Bryopsis is hard to beat, so I'd gladly use reflux as an off-label treatment, but I also physically remove as much as possible by hand before dosing to get the toxins in the bryopsis algae out so they're in the trash rather than decaying the tank. And then certainly get that carbon and skimmer going immediately day three as they suggest. This is the same counsel for those who use products like Flatworm Exit. Flatworms are well known to contain toxins. Get as many as humanly possible out before treatment, after treatment, and they're all over the sand. Suck them out. Don't let them decay and then release those toxins. Another article considers another common challenge in reef tanks, cyanobacteria, which has visible, observable negative effects on many corals in marine aquaria. The study called Elevated Temperature and Allelopathy Impact Coral Recruitment. They start by stating that live cyanobacteria are also known to inhibit coral larval sediment on settlement substrata, but the mechanisms of inhibition are not known. They suggest that since cyanobacteria are prolific producers of secondary metabolites, we hypothesized that allelopathy is a potential mechanism of cyanobacterial competition with coral larvae, which shows that the test microcolon A on the coral because it's common in cyanobacteria. The net result of that is the allelopathic compound microcillian reduced total survival rates to less than 25%, total settlement to less than 10% of the larvae supplied in both temperature treatments. After exposure to the microcillian A, the larvae had 2.3 times upregulation of stress enzymes. This is somewhat reef nerdy confirmation for things we already know. Tanks with lots of cyano don't do well. Again, potentially why when products like Red Slime Remover or ChemiClean are used, most rid their tanks of cyano without any major issues. I've never had any issue using these solutions, but I also try to siphon out the bulk of the cyano before using these treatments. We also follow the directions and perform the water changes after. Related that both diatoms and dinos are known producers of allelopathic compounds within the prolific slimes they create in the tank. Jonathan has a great guide he posted on Reef to Reef called Dinoflagellate Identification Guide, where he shares a guide to identifying dinos as well as the severity of the toxins within each. However, the most common way coral warfare is talked about is within the corals themselves, and within that, the most common the toxins that soft corals produce. And countless studies. Effects of soft corals on coral recruitment. Preliminary evidence for directional allelopathic effects of the soft coral on secretorian coral recruitment. Competitive strategy of soft corals, allelopathic effects on selected corals. All coming to the same conclusion. These soft corals like Similaria inhibit the settlement of new corals, inhibit growth of juveniles, and can even cause mortalities in adults. 
Okay, net result of this is it sounds like everything in the tank is going to attack each other and we're all doomed, which of course isn't the case. However, we can embrace the fact that all kinds of organisms in the tank produce toxins and release them into the tank. It's a fact. How they affect each other in every coral in the tank is way beyond what we'll ever fully understand or accurately identify when a coral or some corals are stressed or occasionally dying. It's kind of a moot point when a few bucks of activated carbon largely removes these toxins. A skimmer will reduce them and ozone will break them down. This is more about understanding why good practices produce good results. So we have the wisdom to continue to perform these actions or practices and understand the risks and what to look for if we don't. In terms of carbon, we just want most of the tank's water to come in contact with that carbon a handful of times a day. Nothing difficult. A small amount of carbon in a bag between the baffles of your sump might be enough. A small filter like the CJ Shark that passes water over that bag even better and easy to clean. A BRS reactor that forces water through the carbon, probably the best solution, the smaller version enough for most tanks. Ozone's an alternative to carbon. Rather than capture organics like carbon does, ozone oxidizes or breaks down the organic toxins so they're not as harmful. We only run ozone one hour at night and ORP controlled to stay below 400 on a recirculating skimmer with long contact times, but still passes most of the water through it more than once a day. Beyond ORP, the best way to evaluate how ozone's work in the tank is the white bucket test. Fill a white bucket from your tank. If the water's crystal clear blue, then the lack of organic yellowing molecules is a strong indication that the organic toxins are getting broke down adequately as well. The white bucket test works as well on carbon. Use it to figure out how often to change your carbon. We're using ozone on 52SC tanks simply because it works every day. We don't have to worry about changing out media or how long it'll last. Some reefers will choose to use both to back each other up as well as other minor benefits to each. I'd consider a skimmer more supportive to organic toxin removal than eliminative, but a skimmer that is capable of pulling a constant stream of gunk and set up right to do so will obviously do that better than most. The MaxSpec Air Aqua is what we used on the 52SE tanks. The DC recirculating design is the best and easiest that I've used. There's an ozone kit with some tubes needed to swap out to use the Ozotech generator. Next up, additives as pollutants. They're inevitable, but also avoidable challenges.